Hey guys, welcome back to Football Manager. It's been a while and apologies for that. Evidently, as you are well aware, I've been unwell for the uh, past couple of weeks. And when I have been well, I've been prioritising the FIFA content, as you may well understand. So, uh, we're well enough and have the spare time to be able to, and the voice to, record some Football Manager today. So we're back on the horse. We find ourselves, to refresh your memory, third in Ligue 2 in some very good form. However, we have just lost our best player as we've sold for £15 million Anthony Ruol to Bayer Leverkusen for £15 million. So he's now gone. We need to bring in a new centre-back rather sharpish to replace him in the squad. We are also looking for a potential forward-minded utilitarian player, really. Someone that can play left, right, cam, maybe even centre mid the same way that Florenzi can as well. Uh, just a squad player, basically, to try and build out that, flesh out that team. We also recently brought in Franck Honorat as well, of course, from Marseille for just £875,000. Played four starts, 23 sub-appearances in Ligue 1 last year. And the year before was even more heavily involved in their first team. 11 starts. So he's of quality for sure. He's only 28 as well. He's our highest earner now, but he made an impact in his first game and I'm hoping he can continue to do that. So, we find ourselves with money to spend, £21 million and thirty grand in the wage budget, with a left-back hopefully signing sooner rather than later as well to come in, that being Arno Donny. Initially, he'll start, but the plan is obviously for him to be back up once Silla returns from the African Cup of Nations. Silla will be my starting left-back continually. We're waiting for Gerasi to come back from the African Cup of Nations as well. He will be a big loss in the meantime. So, let's crack on. We're going to try and find a centre-back. There might not be much gameplay in this episode because it's going to be fairly heavily transfer-based and how much of a video this makes, I'm not sure. Because, I'm, again, not sure how much actual gameplay there'll be in there. But anything that is of significant note transfer-wise, I will show you. And as we progress throughout the course of the episode, hopefully we can get some wins in the league as well and maintain our promotion push. Do drop the video a like if you're enjoying this save. Thank you for your patience again. And do let me know in the comments section if uh, you'd like to see more Football Manager returning to the channel over the next few weeks and months. Because I know it's not been the most well-received of games this year as opposed to usual. But still, it is a game that I love to play and a game that I'd love to stream and continue to upload. So if you still want to see it, I'll still make it. Right. I'm going to go and try and find myself a centre-back, if you don't mind. BRB. All right, so first game of the day. We're still relatively strong, despite not having Ruel. out. We can obviously bring Nikolaisen back into the fold to the starting lineup for the time being. Although we are looking to replace him in the starting lineup still and drop him to the bench. We have called up Kevin Kevin from Toulouse Durr, the second side. So supposedly four-star potential for him, but we'll wait... We'll wait and see. I'm not entirely too sold on that at the minute. Frank Warner needs a squad number now to play in Liga. So to play in Ligue 2 because his first game wasn't in um, league competition. It was in the cup, I think. They have Hrugota up top, who's decent. Andrea Favili is pretty good as well. We have... Oh, Ma Maxine Godelons is their captain as well. Claremont Foot, one of the first, time, first teams we played, I think, actually, in the save. And we've not had a great result against them despite, or other than that 4-1. I think earlier in the league, we actually struggled against them. It was 2-2. Uh, we'll just quickly uh, get through this. Let's see what happens out there. And then we can go to the kickoff. We are five wins in a row, though, most recently in all competitions. So we would be favourites. Let's see if the old not played FM for a little while, so things don't necessarily go according to plan. Stereotype. Or superstition comes to fruition. We'll wait and see. Paris FC or Paris FC have won their uh, 19th match day. So they've gone above us for now. This will be our 19th match day. So if we can win it, we'll go back above them. Twa not playing. And QRM currently drawing 0-0 with Dijon. But they've had a red card after 9 minutes. So we expect QRM to now win that probably quite comfortably. FM can look a bit daunting at first KSM. But once you actually are in control of it yourself and can manually navigate, then it is, it is easy to pick up. Obviously, watching a veteran player just zip from menu to menu to menu when they know where they're going and it's more muscle memory than anything else, it can be a bit overwhelming. 
We barely had much of the ball. We had that against Clement last time we played them. They keep the ball really well. And they haven't done much with it. Quateng. He's if you want an attacking fullback, you can't get much better than Quateng at the minute. He loves getting forward. And that is going to squeeze home through Teisterlinger as well. His first goal of the season on the transfer list wants to leave. But he's still putting in the work for the boys. We take a late one goal to nil lead here. And that could be huge for our reputation, for our appeal to bring new players to the club. If we continue to look like we might well challenge for automatic promotion back to Liga then we are obviously a more enticing proposition for any new players that might want to come in. We see it through. Not a straightforward game as we expected it to be. As in, we expected it to not be a straightforward game. We didn't expect it to be a straightforward game and it wasn't. But well done, lads. As it says there, we weren't at our best, but we got the result. And that's the most important thing. Mark Carrado and Bjorn Hardley. Glossy, thank you very much for the raid of six, my friend. Hope you're streaming well, dude. Thank you very much for sending everyone across. You join us in a January transfer window. Donny is coming in. There you go. As soon as you guys arrive, we can confirm a signing. He will come in and join us and start at left back for the current... Ah, do I... Yeah, he's going to come in and start at left back whilst we wait for Silla to come back from international duty. So I can't... now that he's in, I can drop Kevin back to the second team. I got, I got all confused there for a moment. He's going to come in and start initially. Ashish is now out for three to five weeks. It's just not what we needed at this stage, to be honest. Adil. Bollocks. Never mind. Twa coming up next. It's going to be a really difficult fixture. And we're still in the process of looking for a new centre-back and a new winger. Although we think when it comes to winger, we're probably just going to try and loan in uh, Elias Akamash from uh, Barcelona. But Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp has come to me and had a little bit of a whinge. Saying, you're not playing Stefan where you're sent in playing. Because we said that we were playing at centre-back as a ball rock playing defender. And he's being played at present at centre-back as a ball playing defender. But he has been playing elsewhere. Uh, if I show form. Uh, he has played as a ball winning midfielder as well. but And a full-back on occasion, on occasion. But he is playing there. So... Actually, in the tactics, he might be the other way around. No, yeah. I'll swap them two like that. There you go. Happy now, Jürgen. Happy now. You know, he's not playing as a, as a ball-playing defender. Um, I'll take care of it. Anthony Briançon at uh, Saint-Étienne would be good. No interest in joining us online, but would be interested in joining permanently and wouldn't, wouldn't want too much wage-wise, apparently. I mean, Salernitana and Hatafe are interested. He's got quality. He's got experience. He's playing to a relatively decent level in League 2. Certainly a potential. So we shall head now into our second game of the day. And fingers crossed, come away with a solid result this time as well. Although, with it being Twa and then being above us in the table, it's a rather sizable fixture, this one. We absolutely would love revenge from them beating us last time we played them. They are in really good form, as are we. And well, the league table speaks for itself. If we can win this, we go into an automatic promotion spot. Albeit Twa would still have a game in hand. But if we can win this, we'd go into an automatic promotion spot. Oh, really, Ben? Didn't realise that. Oh, it snuck in. Mo Dowda wins the header off the inside the post. Tupe can't get across to it, and we are behind away from home after 27 minutes. First highlight we've had of the game. Igor Silva with the throw. Ogbo then a little back heel to get it back to him. First time cross, and I, I feel like Quateng probably should have at least challenged for that, decided against it. And it's cost us a goal there, unfortunately. Quateng is, is decent in the air. Heading of 11, jumping reach of 12. He's only 5 foot 11 though, which might have... I mean, 5 foot 11 is not tiny. It's obviously not massive either. How tall is Mo Dowda? I think he's like 6 foot 4 or something. 5 foot 9? How's he winning that header then? 
Come on, Quateng. I just praised you in the last game, and now you're going to ruin it. Come on, then. That's a lovely ball. Frank. A little bit of magic. Uh, hmm. I'll say a little bit of magic would have been lovely. Mawissa. It's deflected. It's poorly cleared. Onovat, Satoka, Taibi, Neves. Finish! Pick that out! That is a wonderful finesse. It's terrible, terrible defending from Twa. But on his own, Neves, first time. <whistles> you love to see a goal of that quality. Scored for you, not against you. We are level then in this one. And still on the attack, looking to push for the win. No, Capo hasn't brought that down very well. We'll be right after we scored the last goal. If there is it to be another one, regardless of which way it may well go, it might be. They can find that ball through there. Them going back, 2-1 in front. But Dupe keeps it out. Draw keeps us within touching distance. Which is all we, all we want at the minute. 34 games, not 38. So we are edging ever closer to the end of the season. Albeit we're still in January. But there's only 17, only 14 games to go, sorry, after this. Say, so I'll just praise them. Say so they've done well to come back just to keep morale high. Because we have an important game against Auxerre coming up next. And they're right behind us. So... <sighs> be good if we could get a victory in that one or again at least avoid defeat Frankowski's out for a few days now which is not great it's manageable but it's not great but they wanted 11 million for Yasin though didn't they he'd be very good though the temptation is there Toulouse has now bid for Dupe they've actually offered me Melvin oh shit they've offered me Melvin Bard as make weight for Dupe. Now that is huge. Melvin Bard is the player we have on our shortlist. Currently involved in this bid. And he does look genuinely decent as a left back. And I was just talking about maybe thinking about going in for the Cairn goalkeeper. The young 17 year old that looks very, very good indeed. I'm going to accept that. Let's start negotiations with uh, Anthony Brown Son as well. Try and bring him in. And this transfer window might just be coming to life. I mean, that's a, that's a, just a straight no-brainer, isn't it? It's an easy decision to make that. They've offered me a player that I was actually interested in. It makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Then we could send the young Arno that we've just signed... Oh no, Donny. We can send him out on loan to get him some more first team football. And then that would be fantastic. We'll see how that develops over the next couple of days. But we might well be putting in a bid for the young goalkeeper at Cairn, Yasin Zahuni. 17 years of age and is unreal. 26 clean sheets in only 49 professional games. I'll give you 8.25 million. They'll accept it. Before, they negotiated for 11. And that's just a no-brainer. He's not interested in talks. What? Why? We prefer to continue his development at Ken. Why would he... Well, that's ruined that idea. We might be having a rather sizable... Um, might be having rather a, a sizable transfer window in the end. Uh, we have such a large budget in League 2 because we sold our star centre-back to Leverkusen for £15 million. We sold uh, Anthony Rouault to Leverkusen for £15 million. Begrudgingly, but still, he left nonetheless. And there are still two other clauses. We'll be very interested in make, in uh, negotiating terms, apparently. Koke Vegas. He wouldn't be on as much as... Um, fine. That's pretty much a like for like, really, with Dupe. Koke Vegas. But he's younger. 
and with Dupe definitely leaving, then I don't know as we could, in the scenario we find ourselves in at the minute, do much better. I see he's still on his way back from injury. Frankowski is fit enough to be able to be selected-ish. Can be named on the bench at least. The grow is unregistered at the moment, but I'm, I'd be more interested in just moving him on. More so than anything else. Tyson Inga's played well, so I'll give Tyson Inga the start. Satoka's had a couple of wobbles, but we'll see what we can do in this next game then at home against Dogs there in the league. Might be Dupe's last game. We shall wait and see, but we certainly owe them after them beating us earlier in the season again. We lost to Twa and we lost to Orcs Air earlier in the year. We've now just drawn with with Twa. So we, if we can avoid losing to Orcs Air as well, then it would show the progress we've made as a team. It's been a good stand-in so far, Moissa. Onura turns. Needs an option. Doesn't really have one. Apart from Florenzi, who slams it. Aldo, you love to see it. Will he buy goal to nil inside a minute? Dream start at home against Orcs Air. He's just... Ghosting in at the back post, and to be fair to him, Onora has the vision to find him. That's all about the vision of our new winger, Frank Onora there. Bataille has been causing us problems down the right-hand side the entirety of the game so far. That's a ping. Bamba onside. Oh, how is your luck, sunshine? Ball played through. I mean, it's a great through ball. Take nothing away from that. The vision... To even see that is remarkable. But after getting a foot in there and for it to still bobble free. That sucks. Neves, Shaibi, Onuva. Needs options in the middle. And short. Pen! Shaibi gets there first. Now Delinga, Tice Delinga is down to take this. And Tice Delinga will take it. We'll, we'll confirm. So from the spot... He said it looked like a dive, but I'm not sure. It did look like the defender got there second. And Dalinga's penalty is saved. Chance to take the lead for the second time at home against Orcs Air. Wasted. Never mind. We'll take the point. I'll say you're unlucky tonight. <sighs> yeah. It's two points dropped, though. We could have been on 40. Never mind. Ah, bollocks. Never mind. It's fine. Pick ourselves up. We go again in 10 days' time against the same opponent. And we'll try in the cup to get the better of Orcs there. Anthony Briançon has rejected the offer from Vittoria. And will be joining Toulouse coming from Saint-Étienne. Except we have a new centre-back partner for Bejetic for the rest of this season. Nikolaisen will have to take a step back onto the bench as our first signing of today's stream comes in. Anthony Briançon, six foot one, really fit, really physical, high performer. Good. Good. That's him in. That's the centre back situation sorted. Still hoping to bring in Melvin Bard, Coco Vegas and Elias between now and deadline day in 48 hours time. I mean, I tried to sign you and you said fucking no, mate. I'll try again. We might get the goalkeeper we want. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Noises are being made. Excited noises are being made. We might get the goalkeeper we want. With 24 hours to go in the transfer window, the man that earlier in this window, about a week ago, said he had no interest in joining us whatsoever. Now, when no one else has shown any other interest, he's come back and he's been like, I'll play for you now if you like. And I am not... Going to carve my nose to spite my face. Not going to be like, well, you said no before, so no now. I still want you. You're still coming in, pal. And for six grand a week, dreamy. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Have him through the door, please. Yes, please. 
Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, no. Donnie is going to go. I will accept. And Coke Vegas. Oh, no. Um, 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 I can't delay it. I can't delay it. I can't delay it. I just have to hope. Oh, I'm in a real predicament now. I either... Can I not just wait until later in the day? I can't even wait till later in the day. It's Coco Vegas, or I say no and pray that the deal for young Yanis goes through. I'm going to cancel that, and we put all our eggs... In the Zahuni basket! Yes! Yasin Zahuni! 17-year-old goalkeeper that is already fantastic and will continue to grow. Yeah, let's go! Oh, the risk pays off immediately! Sweet! Sweet! Sui! Sui! No, Elias has gone to Frankfurt instead. I understand. <laughs> I absolutely understand. I'm not going to hold it against you, mate. Oh, Yasin is in. We paid 8.25 million in one lump. And he's now valued at 12 to 18. He's kept, on average, a clean sheet every other game. In his career. Dupe is now going to go. And Melvin Bard will come the other way. Oh! Transfer deadline day just got even better. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Get in! And a lone beard as well. Good. Well, now, potentially, the money that we were going to spend on Elias, I could spend, I could potentially spend on um, Deminge from Cairn. <laughs> 45 minutes remaining in transfer deadline day. And window closed. 9.2 million left in the bank for the club, which is fine. We might have spent a fair chunk of it in that transfer window, but overall, we've still made a profit of 9.5 million in that window. To round up then, we brought in Franck Honorat the day before the end of the transfer, or day before the transfer window began even, for £875,000. We brought in Arno Donny, who's now going to go out on loan. Or has now gone out on loan. We brought in Anthony Brianson to replace the outgoing Anthony Ruelt. We brought in Yassin Zahouni, who we're delighted with to come in in goal to replace the outgoing Maxime Dupe, who's gone out. And as part of that deal, straight player swap, Melvin Bard, Melvin Bard has joined us in his place. And he looks pretty damn tasty. That's a no brainer. So we've had a great window, I think. It sucks that we lost Wu out, but I think we're actually in a better position without him now than we were when we had him. We are third in the league, within touching distance of QRM and Tois, with 13 games to go in the league season. The promotion chase is well and truly alive. Do join me for later streams and later videos here on the Chesnoy Plays channel for this YouTube video. That's all for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed. Three games in there. Plenty of transfers in there. Plenty of action. And FM is back invariably now on the Chesnoy Plays channel. Alongside, of course, the daily My Player stuff as well. Thank you for your support. Drop the video a like. Subscribe if you haven't. And follow me on Twitch. Come and watch everything live if you want to as well. I'll see you next time.